name is Evan Rappaport, and welcome to the situation. As always, have a good time. This news story has been compiling for the past few years about a possible revolution in the Xenai, China. In 1911, in the, in the Sichuan province, disputes broke out early this year about the ownership of railway lines. Recently, a Republican-leaning army unit held a mutiny in Nanjing, China, following the accidental detonation of a bomb. Ever since this event, revolutionary sentiment has been growing throughout China. The Chinese people have exploded all over this idea, and currently, the leader of the group, Sun Yat-sen, is leading a group of like-minded revolutionaries to end this long-standing Qing dynasty to replace it with the Republic. Sun Yat-sen is working on a compromise with Qing military leader Wang Shikai. Currently, there is a rumor that a compromise is being created Will, which will have advocate infant, infant leader Pu Yi. This deal will place Shikai in power. We have the latest. Let's head to Danny with that. Thank you, Evan. In an effort to save her ailing dynasty, Emperor Sikshi approved the overhaul of the Qing bureaucracy. New departments were established to oversee the police, commerce, education, law, and foreign affairs. Social impurities like foot binding, slavery, opium smoking were all banned. Economic reforms were also implemented to encourage capitalism. What? No way. We have repeat we have received breaking news. I received breaking news out of Beijing. We have just learned that every Sikhsi has died in her sleep. This comes a day after the death of the emperor, who is most likely poisoned, from what we know at the time, by arsenic in the hands of Puyi, a two-year-old. Back to you, Evan. ...system of China. Very vulnerable for that. And in overall, and in overall this, it weakened the country together. Another huge factor was the inefficiency to lead. I mean, come on, a two-year-old running China? Who wants a two-year-old to run their country? The last and most major factor was the attitude of the people. They have been experienced to famines and many frequent floods, which has caused them to be very salty towards their government. With the, with the help, and the government has done nothing to help them at all. I mean, come on government, what, what are you doing here? These might only be a few reasons that the people of China are furious at the dying Qing dynasty. It's failing very much. It might, just, it might just be me, but I think we might have a revolution on our hands. We've just gotten word from Danny that he's an update about the Wucheng Uprising, the turning point of the war. Let's get back to Danny on that. The Wucheng Uprising, which began October 10, 1911, in the Hubei province, was the first successful uprising against Qing rule and the turning point in the war in favor of the revolutionaries. It all began when Qiang Bingkun and other revolutionaries began an assault on the city and captured it by October 11th. They eventually named it Tactical Headquarters and announced it the military government of Hubei of the Republic of China. Back to you in the studio, Evan. With the inspiration of the finally, up, the finally successful uprising in Wuchang, there have finally been, there have been many more in Taiwan, Mongolia, Nangxi, and lots of other more places. This has finally all led up to the ending of the four-month and two-day rebellion, which has ended with over 200,000 losses and the long-awaited abdication of the six-year-old emperor, Pu Yi, and the empress at the time, Dong Wei, Jie, and Long Yu. Here's Danny with more on that story. The abdication of the emperor meant the ending of imperial dynasties and the start of a new era of republic. Yuan Shikai and the revolu revolutionaries made the abdication, and finally, on February 12, 1912, after four long months of conflict, Puye and the Empress accepted the terms for abdication. This meant a new, this meant the start of a new era for China. Today, we have finally come to an end of this conflict in the creation of the new Republic of China. Not only has this started a new age of politics, and has started a very new age of economics and social life for the Chinese. The ending has also meant the rising idea of anti-Manchus, which has resulted in the death of thousands of citizens. Finally, someone broke the chain of autocratic monarchies. For 2,000 years, the new ones have replaced the old, weak dynasties. 
And finally, we have, we have witnessed history in the making of China. Hopefully, the creation of this republic will bring peace and prosperity and stability to China. My name is Evan Rappaport, and on the scene, Danny Bernhardt. And as always, thank you.